like, tell me when. Oh, yeah. is this is this on you or on? Okay, we are on. Hi guys. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> oh. We are on here. We are live from the hatchery. Um, I'm Mikello Stone, and this is Krista Sa. Hi. <laughs> Tell us, what is the hatchery, Krista? Hatchery is a co-working space in Larchmont Village. It's really close to Paramount Studios, and it's just a nice like home office that's not at home, honestly, but it has the benefits of a home office, a real yeah. office, and a cafe all in one, and yeah. I love it here. Yeah. yeah. So um, we're actually um, broadcasting on Facebook Live with the Mevo camera, getting a little plug. <laughs> we're talking about truth, and we had did some kind of impromptu things uh, a few weeks ago, and then we decided we wanted to get on here and talk about some things and make it interesting. Um, I came up with the topic of truth because I think it's such a it's a five five letter word. <laughs> we try to stay away from the four letter words. Um, but what, like, what do you, like, when you say the word truth, so we had a little pre-discussion, but we didn't get too deep in it because we want to keep it uh, live. So, Krista, tell me, like, what do you think of, what first comes to mind when you hear truth? Truth, um, I think of the truth that we uh, keep inside, honestly, secrets, things we're ashamed of. Because I think, you know, there are a lot of things that are true that we're not ashamed of that we don't think yeah. about much because yeah. it's just out there, right? But I think about how to bring out our inner truths that we're keeping locked in. And I think that's a lot of what art is. Okay. And I think that's interesting because, like, the, you've already opened up a theme. And that's what I love, the spontaneous <laughs> dialogue, is truth is something that is hidden from us. Right? That's, I mean, yeah, the capital T truth. I think it's like, if it's so obvious, we don't really care to search for it. Right? right. Like, yeah. Yeah. But to be a truth seeker is... Yeah. So when we think about truth, I mean, you're talking about, and we'll talk about that a little bit more, but about personal truth. But what about truth in terms of what is actually, what is universal truth? <laughs> oh, actually, I want to ask you that because yeah. Alkello has been an educator for many yeah. years, so I feel like you can, you can yeah. bring us a You know, I don't want to dominate the conversation because I could talk about myself for hours. I actually get paid to do it from time <laughs> to time. Um, but actually, when I think of truth, I think of the actual thing that happened um, that regardless of perception, it is. Um, when I think of truth, of course, I'm a, I'm a behavioral scientist, so I come from a science background. And I look at evidence to the fact. And from my perspective, and it's a hard thing to say, the only truth that I could say, um, indisputable truth, about when we're talking about human human existence and our human uh, experience um, in this realm, if you will, is we all will die and everything changes. That's number two. Mm -hmm. And number three is it's all uncertain. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> so then what do we do with that? Uh, well, I'll add also people I'll, I'll say like the only thing is certain certain is death and taxes. But I yeah. feel like, yeah, like a lot of people don't pay taxes. Yeah, exactly. Like, so yeah. Yeah. Like that's, <laughs> that's, a, you know, that's a way to get people to pay taxes is by to put that in there. Uh, let me, let me switch things a little bit around because I have this, I, I'm here, I, I have some notes. Um, people use the term reality. Mm -hmm. What is that and how does that intersect or not intersect with the truth? Oh God. Okay. I, I'm a big believer that like everything is subjective. Like, um, I don't think there's one objective, say like beauty. Like, I don't think there's like one beauty standard. I think that is completely subjective and it might feel objective. It might feel like the truth and the one reality that we have one beauty standard, but that's just something that's been built for a really long time. Do you know what I mean? And that mm -hmm. can be changed actively or just on its own. Well, I mean, that's interesting that you use beauty and aesthetics as mm -hmm. this, what's what people believe to be true about how appearance is, like what the standards, the reference points that are used. That becomes, in, in essence, what we perceive to be true 
becomes true. Yeah. And then the more people that believe that it's true, that's how I describe reality is a collective perception about something that we think is true. It's a collective agreement that we forget we agree to. Yeah. <laughs> like we just think yeah. it is. Like, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? I mean, if you think about it, we're raised as children to believe certain things. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even going to get deep into what I think people should or should not believe. Because I believe, and that's funny because what I believe is that if people believe in something and it's helpful to them and not harmful to others, then that belief system is significant and important. Valid. Yeah. yeah. When, when, when a belief system invalidates someone else's belief system and causes harm, that's when it becomes problematic. Yeah, I think for me a lot of it has to do with self harm, like how much, how much your belief system may or may not be serving mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. um, like, I think, for example, like let's say um, a high school student is gay and hasn't come out yet, right? And he's mm -hmm. maybe in a small town where the predominant belief is that um, being a homosexual is bad. And so if he's carrying that belief in him because he's been given that mm -hmm. since birth, mm -hmm. you know, then um, it's something that doesn't serve him. And it's like one, I think the first big truth that I discover that's helped me is that if a, you know, quote unquote truth or reality doesn't serve you, you don't have to go with it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's like a big leap to take mm -hmm. that like, holy shit, I don't have to like accept mm -hmm. the yeah. given, yeah. you know, rubric. Or oh truth. yeah. And that's, you yeah. know, to me personally, um, you know, I've been out of school for a long time, college, yeah. but I swear it, it doesn't feel that long. And um, the greatest thing that I think that I got from college was realizing that I had a greater stake in creating my own uh, reality based upon how I've defined it. Mm -hmm. And I've also found in college that things in reality that were defined for me, let's say by parents or society, had an intention behind it. And that mm -hmm. intention is usually to exclude certain behaviors and to follow a certain moral or ethical tradition that is not rooted in what is true and what is the right way. Right. You know, or, there is no universal morality, for for example, mm. around certain things. But I know we, we want to keep this somewhat brief, uh, about 10 minutes. We've got four minutes to wrap up. I'm going to ask one thing. Um, well, the thing is, is like the original, one of the original ideas for this was like, um, to focus on content creators and I use content creators in a very expansive way whether it's someone who writes that's content or creates curriculum or creates films or any type of digital content we anything love the creative. In, we love the creative process this is content right now that we're creating because of the tools that we have um, so do you I know you're a writer and I know you do a whole lot of yes. different things do you inject truth into your content and um, I know I do and I know I'm asking you the question because I already know the answer <laughs> but maybe the question really is like what strategies do yeah. you use to inject truth yes yeah, so I don't go in there being like I need to uh, I need to bring truth to to the world today and I don't and I don't think of it as even injecting truth but I, I actually do it more um, like I'll just like sort of lay it all out there and afterward see if it's truthful and so like mm -hmm. even in comedy like if it's not true people won't laugh mm -hmm. so that's like right. and you know you want people yeah. to laugh yeah. um, or but it's that's not but it goes for like not just comedy but drama like people won't feel it if it's not truthful. Yeah, yeah. So I keep it actually, I use it more as um, a way to know if what I wrote is worthwhile and working. You know, have you, have you ever intentionally uh -huh. put something in to the content you were creating? Something that didn't arise like organically? Have you ever, in, I, I use the word injected, I, I don't know, I love the word because I've it's almost Thanksgiving. I'm thinking of injecting a turkey. <laughs> the booster, yeah. Right. Uh, so is there any time when you said, I absolutely want to make sure that this idea and this message is communicated yes, as opposed to the organic true. nature of it? That's I think true. I'm looking more on the intentionality 
of injecting truth as opposed to truth that is revealed in an organic process. Right. Okay. So, yes. Because I, I think, you know, it happens when there's like a group of people, I feel like, like, for example, I think, um, I think like how I grew up, like Asian American, overachievers, super competitive in schools. Um, I felt like we went through a very specific pain and struggle that I felt wasn't being captured in stories and in media and mm -hmm. kind of treated like it doesn't exist. It's not valid to like complain or try to fix it and all these things. So I actually wrote, the first pilot I ever wrote um, that aired an option by Fox was, I was trying to bring that truth out into the light. And um, so... So that was like your initial... Yeah, I was like... started I, with that. I started And then with you that. built the story around it. Yeah. Has there been times where as the story was unfolding, you realized you had to put something in or else it would get lost? Because I think there's a, this problem where things are too in your face and pushed too hard that people won't accept them. But then if they're too vague and ambiguous, then people will not pick it up. Yeah, I think it's more about like how, um, I think like it's true feeling versus like true rhetoric. You know what okay. I mean? Yeah. Okay. Like, so yeah. I, 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 I'm going to stop you right there because yeah. you said something I think that's really pivotal to, to uh, yeah. the creative process is feeling mm -hmm. the emotion. Mm -hmm. Like how does then, uh, emotion.